Well, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Uh, I want to first thank everybody for being here today and those that are watching the, the video and those that are on Zoom. I uh, just want to thank everybody. And I guess uh, today we'll be starting in the book of James. We'll be continuing in James. Uh, James chapter 4 and 5 is my plan. So it might go kind of quick. It might be a short a shorter study because it's only the two chapters, but we'll see. I'm not sure how many rabbits I'll end up chasing, but uh, anyway, that's the plan. So right now, let's uh, go to Yahuwah in prayer and just ask him to bless this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you do and the many blessings that you give us. And Father, we just ask that you continue to work in our hearts and our lives, helping us to become more like you call us to be. Father, we ask that you continue to, to give us your wisdom in the word in your word. And, and Father, help us to have the understanding which is us walking in it. Help us to, to, to walk in what we learn. And Father, we'll give you the praise and the glory. And Father, I know that some of us around have ailments and and sniffles and, and coughs and th sore throats and all. And Father, we just ask that you work in our in our health, help us to, to become healthy. And Father, with uh, our personal problems and, and all that we're going through, Father, we just ask that you be with us, watch over, guide, and direct us. Father, we we praise you, we love you, and we just ask you again to be here with us today. All this we ask and pray in Yahushua's name. Amen. Okay, so we'll be in the book of James, chapter 4. Okay, starting in verse one, it says, what causes conflicts and quarrels among you? Don't they come from the passions at war within you? Okay, so I want to stop right there just a second. Uh, one of the things that, and, and Paul talks about this a lot, is battling our flesh. Well, I think this is what he's talking about. Our, our conflicts and our quarrels are generally from within you know we see a problem or we see an issue and our problem generally isn't the problem our problem is our dealing with that problem in other words you know it's it's our reaction to the problem so you know we look at things and you know if we could possibly look at things and realize that yahuwah is guiding most of those then, you know, it helps relieve us from the, the anxiety and the issues around, you know, our feelings toward a problem. And I guess, you know, if you just look at the news and, and it's real easy to watch the news and to get really bent out of shape about what's going on in the government and the world and all that kind of stuff. But if we stop and look at it from a, you know, just kind of try to step out of the, the, the everyday battle and, and just look at it for what it really is, you'll see Yahuwah manipulating all that's going on. So if he's manipulating it, then why should we have to worry about it? You know, we should let it, let him do what he's doing. And our biggest thing is to try not to get in his way. So, <clears throat> you know, again, I mean, you know, I look at a lot of things that's going on and I think, you know, how stupid can it can can our government be, or how stupid can this world be? But the thing is, Yahuwah has them blinded to where they're doing what He wants them to do, and and He wants them to do it because of prophecy. And we have to end up where prophecy is true. In other words, it's it's around. Uh, if you read the book of Revelation, it talks about, you know, the, the the tribulation and the wrath. Well, you can't have tribulation and wrath when everything's fine and dandy. So, you know, it's, it's we have to, you know, we have to get to where we have the tribulation and the wrath. So, you know, that if that's true, then Yahuwah is directing it because he's the one that said we're going to have the tribulation and the wrath. Okay, so you know, understanding that he's manipulating it should relieve us from the burden of worrying about it, I guess. It's not, it's, and it's one of those things that's a lot easier said than done because I see things going on all the time and I make comments like, you know, how stupid can those people be or how that was stupid that what he did? Well, yeah, I think it probably was, but at the same time, 
Yahuwah's probably orchestrating it. Okay, verse two, uh, you crave what you do not have. You kill and covet, but are unable to obtain it. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask. And when you do ask, uh, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motive that you may squander it on your pleasures. So, you know, I know that uh, a lot of this, we, you know, we need to really kind of get under our belt because, you know, a lot that we crave that we don't have or a lot that we want that we don't have. And, and, you know, we do a lot of things to try to get what we want, but we, but at the same time, knowing that Yahuwah may be restraining us, he may be keeping us from having what we want just because we we'll probably squander it on our pleasures and not use it for his kingdom. And so, you know, it, it's, it, it throughout this study and all the new Testament, you know, it talks about the, the rich, and the poor. The poor are the ones that are, you know, that the scripture talks about will inherit uh, the kingdom. And the rich, well, they're going to, you know, they have, well, they have their treasure in the kingdom of the world, where the poor have their treasure in the kingdom of Yahuwah. So, you know, we kick and we fight and we struggle and we try to, you know, get better and more and, and all, but at the same time, that may not be the plan. That may not be in the ultimate plan, in Yahuwah's plan. Verse 4, it says, You adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward Yahuwah? Therefore, whoever chooses to be a friend of the world renders himself an enemy of Yahuwah. Or do you think that the scripture uh, says about the reason that the spirit, uh, or let me go back on that, or do you think the scripture says, without reason that the spirit he calls to dwell in us yearns with envy, but he gives us more grace. This is why it says, Yahuwah opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So, you know, to be friends with the world, to live or to have your heart set on the kingdom of the world is to be in opposition to Yahuwah. And it's the word, it says that uh, it's to be hostility, have hostility toward Yahuwah. And it, it says that you are an enemy of Yahuwah if you, if that's your focus. If your focus is on the kingdom of Yahuwah, then that's, therefore you're a, a friend of Yahuwah. But otherwise, if you're, if your focus is on the world and the worldly things, then you're an enemy of Yahuwah. So, that's a, it's a hard pill to swallow because I know that we all have to get out and we, you know, we have to make a living. We have to, you know, sustain ourselves. We have to buy things that, you know, that keeps us going. But at the same time, you know, he's going to supply us with what we need if we're following him. And I don't mean it'll, yeah, I don't mean that, you know, it's just going to show up at your doorstep. Now it could. But he'll he'll have it to where you can work a job or have it to where you can, you know, make money if he thinks you need it. Or at least that's the way that I see it. Or seven, submit yourselves uh, then to Yahuwah. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to Yahuwah and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and weep. Turn your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before Yahuwah and he will exalt you. So if we submit ourselves to Yahuwah, so how do you submit to Yahuwah? One of the things is, again, to draw near to him, to follow his commandments, to believe that Yahusha is the Messiah and resist the devil. So to draw near to Yahuwah is to follow the Torah, to live the Torah. To resist the devil means that you are not living according to the world. 
you're living according to Yahuwah. In other words, again, it is to follow the Torah. Okay? <clears throat> if you follow the Torah, then you will be covered under the protection of Yahuwah. If you that and that would be resisting the devil. And the scripture talks about his fiery darts will come near us, but it won't won't hit us. We will be tormented. Don't don't get me wrong. We will have uh the world will try to come against us, but at the same time, we will be protected. Now, will it be a physical protection or a spiritual protection? Well, it could be both, but the the physical protection is not what we're worried about. I mean, they can kill us. They can kill us. They can eat us. They can do whatever they want, but they can't destroy our spirit. And that is where we really need the protection is to protect our spirit so that we don't fall into being a, an enemy of Yahuwah. As long as we're a friend of Yahuwah, they can kill this body. They can do whatever they want to with it. Doesn't really matter. But what does matter is it is don't let them steal your soul. Don't let them steal your salvation. In other words, keep following the Torah to the best of your ability and keep, uh, you know, in, in know that Yahusha is the Messiah. <clears throat> if you're trying to live in both worlds, that's where it's talking about being double-minded. It's you're trying to live in both worlds and it's, it's easier said than done. Believe me, because we all get caught up in trying to, to, to gain in this material world. And it's, it, it may not be the plan. And the more that I live, the more that I'm realizing that's probably the case. So we're to turn our grieving, uh, what well, says to grieve, mourn, and, and weep, and uh, to turn your laughter into mourning. So, you know, if you're looking at the world in the way that it is, I mean, if you, if you watch the news at all and you see what's going on, if you think that that's the way to go and, you know, you're happy about it, then I think you're in the wrong boat. So we need to turn, when we look at stuff like that, we need to be mourning because we see a, a whole world full of people going to hell because they choose not to follow Yahuwah, okay? And it talks about us humbling ourselves before Yahuwah and he will exalt us. So the if we're humble before Yahuwah, then we'll be exalted. If we're exalted among the world, if we're lifted up among the world, then we're going to be very low with Yahuwah. <clears throat> so let's see, verse 11, it says, brothers, do not slander one another. All right. This slandering one another is called in Hebrew is called Lashon Hara. Lashon Hara is a very serious uh, sin in the Hebraic walk. Uh, so to talk bad about one of the brothers is to commit Lashon Hara. Well, this is what it's telling us not to do. Okay, Lashon Hara literally means having an evil tongue. So uh, in, in Hebrew, Lashon Hara means evil tongue. So uh, it says, brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law and judges it. So again, it mentions the law. We speak against the law if we talk about one of the brothers so how can you say that the law has been done away with or it's been fulfilled we don't have to we don't have to uh uh follow it anymore it's been nailed to the cross how can you say that when it says very clearly right here that you know if you do something that's considered sin then you're going against the law well if that that would i mean just by just by that you know that the law is still in force because you don't want to be sinning you don't want to be going against the law okay uh and if you judge the law you are not a, a practitioner of the law a practicer or a practitioner of the law but a judge of it there is only one lawgiver and judge the one who is able to save and to destroy but who are you to judge your neighbor so for you know, for us to judge our neighbor, our neighbor, then that would mean that we are judging the, with the law, and there's only one lawgiver, and we are not the judge. But 
he is the judge. Now, one thing I want to bring up here, for you to look at someone and say that they're a sinner, that you, you see that they're not following the law, you're not the judge. All you are is a witness. And I, you need to understand this because the Christian world will throw this in your face and they will tell you, well, you don't judge me. Well, tell them I'm not judging you. I'm just a witness. In a trial, there's a judge, there's attorneys, and there's witnesses. And so I'm just a witness. I see what's going on. I'm not the judge. A judge renders a final verdict. Well, I'm, I know that I can't render a final verdict. Verdict. So I can say that I see someone that's sinning, but I can't say that they're going to hell. Okay. So I can't say that they're going to heaven either because that would be a final verdict and I'm not a judge. So I can see that they're sinning, but I can't determine which way they're going because anything can change. If, uh, if I see someone that's not following the Torah, then I can say very clearly that they're sinning because they're not following the Torah or they're sinning because they don't believe that Yahusha is the Messiah. But now to say that they're going to hell would be a wrong judgment on my part because I don't have the ability to judge whether they're going to heaven or hell. And so, you know, uh, that's that final judgment is reserved for the final judge, which is Yahuwah himself. And so the your attorney, your advocate is Yahusha, hopefully. Then he will say that my blood covers him. Therefore, when the judge, Yahuwah, looks at you, he sees the blood of the Messiah and not you. Because if he sees you or me, then he's seeing sin and he can't look on sin. So by his blood, we're covered and only by his blood are we considered uh, clean or innocent or pardoned, however you want to look at it, from all the indictments that the devil, which is the, the prosecuting attorney, the, the devil will be having all these indictments against us and we will all have many indictments, believe it. You, know, you can believe that. And so by all these indictments, Yahusha hopefully will say, I know him, and how will you know him, or how will he know you? And uh, the the scripture is very clear. And if we we've read in First John, uh, if you say that you know him, and you don't keep the commandments, that you're a liar, and the truth's not in you. So First John, uh, was it two three, I believe, or maybe is it three four? Uh, one of them says that if you say that you know him and you don't keep the commandments that you're a liar and the truth's not in you. And then the, the I think the other one is uh, if you, you know, uh, that sin is transgression of the law. So if you're transgressing the law, then you're in sin. So all the sins that we have committed, if we are truly following the Torah the best, to the best of our ability, then Yahusha is going to say that my blood covers him. And that when, he, when, when Yahusha's blood covers us, Yahuwah doesn't see us. He sees the blood, which that will pardon us, basically. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. Okay. There's only, in verse 12, there's only one lawgiver and judge and the one who is able to save and to destroy. Okay. But who are you to judge your neighbor? So again, we cannot judge. We can be a witness, but we are not a judge. And to, to understand, uh, I know that, like I said, that, that a lot of the Christians will throw this up in your face, that you're judging me and you can't judge me. Well, you can tell them that I'm not judging you. A judge renders a final decision. Okay. He, he's going to say where you're going. All I can say is you're saying, I can see it. Okay. Verse 13, come now. You who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city or spend a year there, carry on business or make a profit. Uh, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow or even the next minute. Okay. What is your life? You are a mist, a, a mist that appears for a little while, then it vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if Yahuwah wills it or if Yahuwah is willing, we will live or do this or that as it 
as it is, you boast in your proud intentions. Uh, all such boasting is evil. Anyone uh, then who knows the right thing to do yet fails to do it is guilty of sin. Okay, now, uh, for us to say, you know, I'm going to do such and such tomorrow, or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do this or that tomorrow. Well, it's only if it's according to Yahuwah's will. So basically you're saying that I'm in control, not Yahuwah. Now, if you say if Yahuwah wills it, then you're putting him in control. And that's what we need to be doing. So we need to be careful in how we word things. Now, I mean, I, and I guess, you know, I'm, I'm planning on doing things tomorrow. Now, it is Yahuwah's will if I do those or if I don't. But I'm planning, I have plans to do things. And even by that, I should say, if Yahuwah wills it. Now, uh, our life, again, is only a vapor. It's only here for a short period of time, and then it's gone. And when it's gone, then we're history, okay? And uh, so uh, we need not to, to boast. And by saying that I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that, that would be considered boasting, and it says that that is evil. And so our tongue in, here in the book of James, courts, it courses our path through life and you can curse and you can bless with your tongue and the tongue is probably the most wicked thing that there ever has been because the tongue can can i mean the tongue can kill the tongue can hurt people it can destroy things and it's just it's a it's it's a evil in itself and uh so and it goes on to say, anyone that knows the right thing to do yet fails to do it is guilty of sin. Well, this is the definition that the Christians use for sin. If you know that something's wrong, then that's sin. If you ask any of them, what is the biblical definition of sin? That's the, that's the verse that they generally will use. They don't use the first John uh, verse that says that sin is transgression of the law. They don't say that because... Uh, they know that they're not following the law and that's a, a definition that they don't understand and they're blinded to. But even preachers, I've had preachers, I've asked preachers, you know, Christian preachers, ask them, what is the definition of sin? Well, this is the verse that they always use. Anyone that knows to do things that is wrong, that's sin. Well, that's part of it. But the true definition of sin is transgression of the law. If you're transgressed, if you don't follow the law, that is sin. Okay, let's go to chapter five. All right. Come now, you who are rich, weep and wail over the misery to come upon you. Your riches have rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their, corro their corrosion will testify against you and consume your flesh like fire. Okay, so again, I'm, you know, speaking of the rich. People that are rich get their reward here on earth. People that are poor get their reward after life and with you hooked. So the, you know, where's the, where's the line drawn between the rich and the poor? Well, we probably are all considered rich because we have a lot of things that, you know, that, that there's a lot of people in the world that, that don't know where their next meal's coming from, or even if they're going to have a next meal where us, a lot of us, just about everybody in the United States and everyone in Europe and a lot of in, in the free world are considered rich under the worldly standards. But uh, I'm not sure where the line's going to be drawn. And I'm sure that rich doesn't have to equate going to hell or, but because I mean, look at Solomon and David and, you know, there's, uh, they were very rich and I'm sure that they're going to be in 
they're, I'm sure that they're going to be with Yahuwah in the end. So, you know, but the thing is, is the, the rich, your material possessions, is that your focus or is Yahuwah your focus? Okay. Uh, you have hoarded treasure in the last days. Look, the wages you uh, withheld from the workmen have moved have mowed or the workmen who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of Yahuwah Sabuot or Yahuwah of hosts. And so, you know, the rich, they a lot of times will try to cheat the the workers. And that's what this is talking about. Cheating people out of their 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 what have they what they've earned. Okay, verse five, it says, you have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous. Uh, who did you resist or who did you not resist? Who did not resist you? Okay, so, you know, uh, a lot of us could fall into these categories. You know, we've lived in luxury, self-indulgence. Uh, we have fattened our hearts and in the day of slaughter, we're going to pay for it. So uh, we need to humble ourselves before Yahuwah. We need to not get so tied up in the world. And I know that it's hard to do. It's a lot easier said than done. I mean, I do it too, because, you know, I'm out trying to, uh, trying to make more money and trying to, you know, uh, it's just, we, we all do it. I guess we, you know, we're out working our job and just, we're not satisfied with what we have in a lot of cases. Verse seven, it says, be patient then brothers until you who is coming. See how the farmer awaits the precious fruit of the soil, how patient he is for the fall and spring rains. You too be patient and strengthen your hearts because you who coming is near. Do not complain about one another brothers so that you will not be judged. Look, the judge is standing at the door. Okay. So we know that. So if you, if you look at this, you know, it talks about loving our brother. In other words, so when we, if you look at the, when Yahusha was asked about the, uh, the two greatest commandments, he said, love Yahuwah and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, he's speaking of loving your neighbor as yourself in these words. And uh, so, but I want to, I want to bring up this one thing, and this is more from a spiritual standpoint. It's just so you recognize some of this. The very last verse there in uh, verse, or the, the, the very last part of verse eight, or I'm sorry, verse nine, it says the judge is standing at the door. Okay. I want you to picture this. The judge is standing at the door. We know that the door is uh, we know that the Messiah represents the door. If you take the word Yahuwah, his, his name is spelled in Hebrew, Yod, Hey, Wah, Hey. Okay. That's the Y-H-W-H. And if you transliterate it or translate it into English, it's the Y-H-W-H. Okay. Now, if you take the word Judah, Yehuda. We know that it's Yod Hey Wa Dalit Hey. That's Yod Hey Wa Dalit Hey. That's that'd be the Y H W D H. Okay, it's it's Yahuwah's name with the Dalit. The Dalit is the door. The door is Yahusha. So to get to Yahuwah, the Yod Hey Wa Hey, you have to go through the Dalit, the door, the Yod Hey Wa Dalit Hey. And so there's a picture that that. You need to see in this. And so that we know that, that, that Yahusha is the door to Yahuwah. And the only way to get to Yahuwah is through that door, which is Yahusha Hamashiach. Okay, verse 10, it says, Brothers, as an example of patience in affliction, take the prophets who spoke in the name of Yahuwah. See how blessed we consider those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen the outcome from Yahuwah. Yahuwah is full of compassion and mercy. 
Above all, my brothers, do not swear, not even by the earth, nor by any other oath. Simply let your yes be yes, your no be no, so that you will not fall under judgment. So when we take an oath or when we are asked, let your yes be yes, let your no be no. And uh, or, uh, you know, just it's if Yahuwah wills it. All right. Okay, verse 13. Is anyone of you suffering? Well, the answer to that would be yes, absolutely. We are, a lot of us are suffering. We see what's going on in the world and it just tears us up. Okay, he should pray. Is anyone cheerful? He should sing praises. Is anyone of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of Yahuwah. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick. Yahuwah will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. So our sins that we need to, we need to understand this. Paul talks about this. I, um, I can't remember exactly where it is. I can have left to look it up later, but it talks about that, that sins that are unintentional, are covered by the grace of Yahuwah. Sins that are committed intentionally, there is no remission. The only thing you can do with those is repent. You have to stop doing it. You have to stop purposefully sinning. So if you have repented, if you have turned the other way and stopped committing the sins intentionally, then it's Yahuwah will forgive you. There's only one sin that... Uh, that it talks about is unforgivable and that's the blasphemy of the Ruach. And it's basically to call Yahuwah a liar. And so uh, that would be unforgivable. Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man has great power to prevail. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on, uh, on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth yielded its crop. So the prayer of a righteous person avails much. And so what can, what, how do you become a righteous person? Well, the definition of righteousness is in Deuteronomy 6, 25. It is our righteousness to observe and do all that's written in the book of the Torah. The Torah being the first five books of Moses, the first five books in the Bible, also the first five books of the Bible became flesh. That's John chapter 1, verse 14, became flesh and he dwelt among us. So how can people say that the Torah, the Old Testament has been done away with and at the same breath, they'll, they'll say that they believe that Yahusha is the Messiah? impossible you can't say out of one side of your mouth that the Torah has been done away with and then out of the other side of your mouth say that uh, that you follow Yahushua because he and the Torah are one and the same he the the Torah is written he is the living Torah his whole life is the written Torah if you believe that uh, if you believe in John chapter one, where it talks about in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahuwah and the word was Yahuwah. That word is the Torah. Okay. So we know that in verse 14, it says that that word was made flesh and he dwelt among us talking about Yahusha HaMashiach, the Messiah. So uh, to, uh, to say that the word has been done away with is to say that Yahusha is not the Messiah. All right, uh, let's see, verse 19, it says, My brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth, the truth being the Torah, and someone should bring him back, consider this, whoever turns a sinner, somebody that's not following the Torah, from error of his ways will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Sins, again, is transgression of the Torah. So if you're not following the Torah, you're in sin. And if a brother can turn you 
back if you have strayed from following the Torah and a brother can turn you back, then he would get credit for you having your soul saved. Now, he can't save it, but he can point you in the direction and Yahuwah will save you. And so uh, by following the Torah, then we know that that is our righteousness. It is our righteousness uh, to observe and do all that's written in the book of the Torah. And I'm paraphrasing that. You can go back and read it, but you do need to look at it. Deuteronomy 6, 25. So that's going to, I guess, conclude our uh, study today. We're, you know, it's, it's, I guess this is a, a short, uh, a short study, but uh, I didn't want to get crowded. So when we start in uh, in like, well, I guess we'll be in First Peter, Yahuwah willing, next Shabbat, and so uh, we'll you know start looking at at First Peter, Second Peter, and because there's a lot of really good stuff that that Peter has for us, and it's things that you know I don't want to be rushed when we get into it so you know i'm going to stop our study here in uh, james and just remember that you know one of the major topics i guess in the book of james is our tongue it's controlling our tongue if you can't control your tongue then you can't control your spirit and this is one of the problems that i have is controlling my tongue because a lot of times i say things that i know that i shouldn't say and it's just it's uh uh I get frustrated, I get mad, I let my anger control, and it's just, it's one of those things that uh, I guess I inherited from my mom. She's sitting here looking at me over the top of her glasses. So anyway, uh, it, it's one of those things, it's easy to blame someone else, but it's not anybody's fault but mine, and I know that. So again, I want to thank all of you for watching. I hope you've gotten something out of the study i always do when i you know when i study and bring a, a study group together it's just it's one of those things that we need to again we learn the wisdom of yahuwah he gives us the wisdom and it's our duty to walk in it and it you know he can help make it a little easier for us but at the same time it's our responsibility to walk in it which is our understanding all right so again, thank you, and I guess we will see you next Shabbat, Yahuwah willing.